The aircraft I'll introduce today is one of the important bombers that served the Soviet Union during the Second World War. The name of this aircraft is Tupolev 2-2. The Tupolev 2-2 was a Soviet-built twin-engine and frontline high-speed bomber aircraft that served extensively for Soviet Air Force back in the global conflict. Russian aviation engineer Andrei Tupolev would lend his surname to a plethora of Soviet-era aircraft after founding his Tupolev OKB concern in 1922. By the late 1930s, the world was at war following the German invasion of Poland in September of 1939 to officially mark the start of World War II. By 1940, the Soviet Air Force was interested in high-speed medium bomber platform to lend a modern offensive punch in support of various Red Army initiatives, the result becoming the excellent twin-engine Tu-2 which recorded its first flight of January 29, 1941, and the series was formally introduced in March 1942. After the formation of NATO in 1949, the TU-2 was assigned the codename OBAT in Western nomenclature. Light, twin-engine bombers certainly had their place in the aerial inventories of the period concerning World War II, they offered the high-performance, high-speed flight of dedicated fighter platforms with the firepower of heavier bomber types in one complete package. As such, they could be outfitted with various armament layouts to include machine guns, cannons, bombs, and torpedoes while being called upon to carry out differing sortie types consisting of reconnaissance, ground attack, interception, and torpedo or dive bombing. In this way, many of these twin-engine heavy fighter-type designs of the war came to become the first true multi-role fighter platforms and this was embodied through examples produced by all of the major powers of the time. Britain fielded their famous de Havilland Mosquito while the Soviets showcased their Tu-2. The Americans managed their Northrop P-61 Black Widow night fighters while the Japanese made good with their KI-45 Tony. The 2-2 became one of the more important bombers of the Second World War and proved an overall excellent design. In practice, the airframes proved quite resilient to enemy fire and the harsh operating environments that were the European winter, while their capabilities made them extremely valuable to combine Soviet operations requiring air support. The design centered around a pair of Svetsov ASH-82 radial piston engines fitted to streamline nasalis under each wing assembly and powering three bladed propellers. The fuselage was long and slender, containing operating spaces for the four crew as well as a large internal bomb bay. The aircraft featured external hardpoints for munitions as well. Total ordnance capacity was 3,300 pounds internally and up to 5,000 pounds externally. The forward section of the fuselage contained the elevated cockpit position with the lower nose section glazed for the bombardier. The twin-door bomb bay ran just aft of the bombardier's position along the belly of the aircraft. Base armament consisted of a 2x20mm SHVAK cannon fitted to the leading edge of the wings suitable for attacking enemy aerial and ground targets. The defense was initially provided by 3x7.62mm SHKAS machine guns across three defensive positions, that is cockpit, dorsal, and ventral, though these were later upgraded to the more powerful 12.7mm Berizin UB machine gun types. The undercarriage was fully retractable and of the tail dragger configuration to include two single-wheeled main legs and a single-wheeled tail leg. The empennage incorporated a horizontal plane straddled by rounded vertical tail fins, which provided the needed stability at low levels. Overall performance specifications included a top speed of 325 miles per hour with a range out to 1,250 miles and a service ceiling up to 29,500 feet. Rate of climb was 1,600 feet per minute. All told, the aircraft was regarded as a fast airframe for her class type and much appreciated by Soviet airmen. 
When utilized as a true fighter thoroughbred, the TU-2 certainly held her own. Her value was such that she was utilized in all major actions towards the end of the war that would see the Soviets victors over their German invaders. Production of 2-2s is spanned from September 1941 to 1951. In June of 1942, the Germans invaded the Soviet Union to open up the East Front and this pressed all manner of Soviet industry to previously unseen levels, requiring entire production lines to be set up in Central Russia and many weapons produced in short order. It is noteworthy to mention the somewhat unfriendliness of Soviet production designations when compared to the basic A-B-C or 1-2-3 conventions followed in the West. As such, a D model follows an S model into service while AT simply signifies a torpedo carrying capability. The TU-2 spawned into many recognized variants beginning with the ANT-58 three-seat prototype of 1941. This was followed by the ANT-59 four-seat prototype and the ANT-67 five-seater of 1946 outfitted with, interestingly, diesel engines. TU-2 was the definitive series marker of 1942, outfitted with two by Svetsov ASH-82 air-cooled engines of 1,450 horsepower. The TU-2S was an updated design of 1943 with two by Svetsov ASH-82FN radial piston engines of 1,850 horsepower. A long-range variant, the TU-2D was unveiled in October of 1944 with larger wings and five crew. The TU-2DB was a high-altitude reconnaissance bomber variant, while the TU-2F was a photographic reconnaissance platform filled with camera equipment. The TU-2G proved a fast cargo hauler with limited capacity and the TU-2R was a dedicated fast reconnaissance mount. The TU-2K served as a developmental series for early power ejection seat testing while the TU-2N was used to evaluate the British Rolls-Royce Nani turbojet engine. Another test bed, the TU-2 Paravan, served to trail a cable-cutting facility to be used against the third ground-based enemy obstacle balloons. The TU-2M was outfitted with two by Svetsov ASH-83 radial piston engines of 1,900 horsepower. The TU-2RSHR was used to trial a 57mm internal cannon arrangement though this would never see serial production. The TU-2SH was a prototype ground attack platform outfitted with various weaponry that came to naught. The TU-2 over 104 became an all-weather interceptor mount and the TU-2T was born as a dedicated torpedo bomber platform. During the war, the Tupolev TU-2 proved to be of exceptional service and was considered as their second best bomber right after the P-2. Crews flying the Tupolev Tu-2 were happy with the aircraft's performance as it could survive through heavy damage as well as being a fast attack platform. The very first mission for the Tupolev Tu-2 was over the Veliki Loki. Between November and December of 1942, the Tupolev Tu-2 had flown for 46 sorties. By 1943, the aircraft was already sued for attacking rail junctions as well as airfields of enemy forces and only three of these aircraft were ever lost in action with only seven getting damaged. It was created to directly challenge the Junger-88 bombers. Towards the final stage of World War II, the Tu-2 bomber was imperative to Soviet success. The powerful twin engines of the Tupolev turned it into a high-speed frontline bomber which due to its sturdy armor profile was able to excel in performing dive bombing attack against German armor and mobile units. The aircraft went on to have a successful post-war career as well, being showcased in several communist and Soviet-allied inventories beyond the Soviet Union. 
in all production totaled 2,257 aircraft and stocked the inventories of Bulgaria, China, Hungary, Indonesia, North Korea, Poland, and Romania. Amazingly, several managed frontline operational status into the early 1980s. TU-2 as saw combat actions in the Chinese Civil War in 1927 to 1950, and Chinese airmen flew stortis in the Korean War against the United Nations. The Chinese also utilized their TU-2 as in forcibly putting down Tibetan upheaval between 1958 and 1962. The TU-6 was an evolved reconnaissance variant. The TU-8, a long-range bomber of 1947, and the TU-10, a high-altitude version of 1943. Training of TU-2 crew was handled through the downgraded UTB variant of 1946, and this were powered by two engines of 690 horsepower.